A new Wordle puzzle is online. Click on the link to play. Listening to the following video may give you clues. Please like and share the videos. Trevor Noah at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. The satirical nature of the show makes it a perfect choice for the dinner, as it pokes fun at the politicians, media companies, and news organizations that occupy our national conversation. Noah blasted CNN and Jeffrey Tubin in his set, and even mentioned his own executive editor Jeff Sucker, who resigned from the network in February. In fact, the two could have made a show together about their relationship at work, but CNN Plus shut down its website after a month. Trevor Noah satirizes politicians, journalists, and news organizations. In his new show, The Daily Show, Trevor Noah satirizes the news and political world. He uses personal experiences to give his viewers a new perspective. He makes jokes about all types of people and does not favor one political party over another. In this way, his comedy appeals to a wide audience. Here are some examples of how he does this. And Noah satirizes all parties at the White House correspondence dinner. He also adheres to Pew's fourth core principle of journalism, which states that journalists must be objective. Noah is an expert at identifying and disseminating biased information. His questions, tone, and facial expressions are all carefully constructed to avoid overt bias. However, his satirical style can be criticized if it makes his own bias clear. Despite the political satire, a number of television shows incorporate it into their content. The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, which airs on Comedy Central, is one example. Many other shows, including The Late Show with Stephen Colbert and The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, also make use of political satire to communicate their message. One of Noah's political satires has been Unsin's Crossfire show in 2004, which was notorious for its heavy partisanship. Although the show does not offer objective news, it follows journalism's ideals, and he provides an excellent resource for the public. Noah serves as a community leader and curator of information. He balances his show's goals well, keeping things light and going in depth when necessary. He uses both comedy and news as an avenue for a deeper understanding of the world. There are many ways to approach it and enjoy the results. Biden criticizes Fox News coverage of pandemic. Joe Biden has criticized Fox News, which he has not done publicly, for its coverage of the upcoming pandemic. His criticisms have been directed at Rupert Murdoch. The media mogul who owns Fox News and the New York Post. He also criticizes the network's coverage of the US Capitol attack on January 6, 2021, and the upcoming vaccine against the COVID virus. In the past, the president has called the pandemic a hoax perpetrated by the Democratic Party and recommended strange treatments, such as injecting bleach, in an effort to prevent the disease. He has mocked the idea of wearing a mask to protect oneself against the virus. Yet he has never been more critical of the Trump administration's response. This misinformation campaign must be addressed. President Obama's approval rating is at an all-time low, and rising inflation is hurting his popularity. Biden appeared to be speaking to himself when he said, "More inflation is a good thing." His comments, however, were interpreted as a challenge to the media, which he considered to be too critical. Inflation is a significant political risk. To Democrats, as it lowers purchasing power, increases fuel costs, and lowers their purchasing power. The president's announcement to curtail the quarantine period after the emergence of the Omicron virus continues to swath the United States. The news has largely been ignored by the liberal media, which blasted him for arguing that states had a role in causing the epidemic. On the other hand, the CDC reduced the quarantine period. In both cases. The president lied to the American public. Trump's self-deprecating references. The day-by-day -day present host Trevor Noah headlines the 2019 Grammy Awards with remarks that are both serious and witty. Hosts include members of Congress, members of the Council on Foreign Relations, and celebrities. The Washington Hilton is host to the Plate Gala. Former President Donald Trump did not attend this year's event, which is not uncommon. C-SPAN has provided red carpet coverage for years. While Trump never attended the event, his successor stepped into the role. Presidents have long used jokes to humanize themselves and influence media narratives, but they are especially important at the White House correspondents' dinner.
But Trump is unlikely to think of jokes that do not burn, because he is uncomfortable with journalists who he considers enemies of the American people. Nevertheless, Trump made a few funny jokes at this dinner. Trump was hardly alone in making self-deprecating references at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Not only did he make fun of his own self, but he also poked fun at several big names in media and politics. For example, he took shots at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who is widely considered to run for president in 2024. The Daily Show host Trevor Noah made many jokes about Donald Trump during his hilarious said at the White House Correspondents' Dinner on Saturday night. Noah's set was full of Trump self-deprecating references about Hollywood, Congress, and President Joe Biden. But the jokes didn't seem to get him in trouble, and the president was a good sport. Trump's absence from the dinner in 2011. After Trump's infamous performance in 2011, several news organizations pulled out of the White House Correspondents' Dinner, including CNN, Vanity Fair, and Bloomberg. The New Yorker, too, decided not to attend. Though the dinner was meant to support journalism scholarships, it has gained national attention. CNN decided to invite journalism students instead of celebrities, which may have played a part in Trump's absence from the event. President Donald Trump really shies away from the spotlight, but the correspondence dinner has been a cozy red carpet affair for the press corps since the first in 1951. President Ronald Reagan was the last president to miss the event, but he phoned in to deliver a joke about his ordeal. Throughout the event, humor is key, so it is no surprise that Trump shunned the dinner while in office. Although the President of the United States will not be attending the White House Correspondents' Dinner this year, his presence will continue to draw the Washington media, which is a good thing. The dinner will feature a speech from Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, who broke the Watergate story. Last year, despite President Barack Obama's absence, the event returned to a normal schedule on Saturday night. And while the president will not be there, the COVID wave has already caught up with Vice President Kamala Harris, Mika B. And Joe were reportedly upset about Trump's joke. In addition, Mika and Maggie H. were rude to press sec. Sanders. While the media defended Sanders, some critics are calling for a change in the format and booking of comedians at the dinner. Regardless of the reasons, this was a very disappointing event for the White House. Biden's vaccinated speech. Joe Biden's vaccinated speech and the risk of contagion have sparked a heated debate over whether he should attend the upcoming White House Correspondents' Dinner. While attending a large indoor gathering, he claimed he had been vaccinated and only needed to show a negative test. He then poked fun at the media, the Republican Party, and Fox News, which required guests to have daily tests. Both Biden's remarks and No's routine were highly controversial. However, the latter set was also highly entertaining. The first act was host James Corden's skit, while the second act, a sketch from the Comedy Central's Funny or Die, featured Billy Eichner. In the first act, Biden cracked jokes about his age, Donald Trump, and his vaccinated status. Trevor Noah also addressed COVID concerns which were evident from the comedian's personal attack on Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Trump's decision to boycott the dinner in response to the controversy was a sharp contrast to Biden's decision to attend. The president had declared the media enemy of the people, but he planned to attend the dinner as the massive invasion of Ukraine raged. Despite the political context, the event still attracted a large audience. Despite the raucous atmosphere, the president's vaccinated speech was an unimpressive introduction to his upcoming speech. While there are plenty of critics of Biden's speech, the event has returned, for better or worse.